get to execute almost to perfection and they couldn't. So I, I don't know if there was something going on in, in the team chemistry or whether it was a draft that they weren't normally very familiar with. But I think it's time to go back to the basics. I think they, if they try to do anything again, uh, too fancy against OG, they're going to just get thwomped. Or thwacked. Or any sort of thwh sound. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the draft going to unfold? It's a first overall pick Night Stalker for HR. Interesting, I think, to mention is that the Lich is largely being ignored. The IO is sitting out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely some premier picks that are still on the table. Of course, if they want to go more with their staples, the Fly Phoenix is available. Uh, as for Jerex, well, his Nyx got banned this time, but I mean, there's always things like Sand Cane as a suitable replacement. They mix it up, though. It looks like. Oh, your game is way ahead of mine uh, for some reason. But yeah, uh, they go Wyvern Slardar. So that is a real curveball. Slardar is not a very popular pick nowadays. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the four position supports, it's all about racing towards the runes. And Slardar is one of the best heroes uh, in doing so. I think Clockwork really kind of took his position because Clockwork is just better at fighting to the runes. Slardar might get there faster, but mm -hmm. um, the four position has kind of been warped into where. You go from the mid lane, you go into the camp to stack, and then you go for the rune. And Slardar is very efficient for doing things like that. And also allows you to combine with certain uh, off lanes. If S4 gets, let's say, a uh, Darkseer, we're going to see the return of the Darkseer Slaughter lane. Darkseer in particular also combos amazingly well with Witcher Wyvern. That is certainly true. Obviously, Slaughter enables Roshan takes, uh, even if you have cores that aren't that good at it. So. Yep. Uh, it opens up the carry pool a little bit in that regard. As far as those cores go, the Ana Invoker is lurking out there. If that's something OG want to consider heading into Phase 2. But for now, HR, they'll make their second selection. They grab the early Night Stalker. This is often paired with a Bat Rider pick. Uh, we saw that earlier today, but the Bat is actually banned. So it could just be an a la carte Night Stalker as the four position. And, well, they'll take the Darkseer for themselves. So. I wonder how much of this is they want the Darkseer and how much of this is taking it away from OG. If they didn't really want it, they could, they could ban it. Ban but, it, yeah. yeah. It's killing two birds with one stone this way. I mean, obviously, the Night Stalker Darkseer is a great dual diving duo. You know, you just get the double Iron Shell and you run at people. Right. Uh, used to be Spear Breaker was kind of filling that role, but Night Stalker with the, the new Hunter and the Knight just offers so much more. So... Gives them a lot of aggression. Obviously, the Darkseer sets up for late game. I mean, still, they could go for something like the Shadow Fiend, if that's what HR have in mind. Interesting to see them step away from the 3-3 Clockwork, uh, which had so much success earlier today, uh, and even when they tried to run as a support for Milan. Seems like a comfort pick for HR, but maybe one they've lost faith in after that game. Yep. Do you want to mention this is another Winter Wyvern first phase pick? I think this might be only like the fourth or fifth game ever. <laughs> That's the case. Yeah, EG picked it like fourth or fifth uh, yesterday in their series versus Liquid. OG's a team that actually picks it first phase so commonly. It's a hero that they're comfortable OG just with. picks those types of supports early. Like they pick the Phoenix early, they pick yep. the Wyvern early. Um, they, they tend to prioritize uh, Fly's heroes early in the draft, I think, a lot more than other teams. Sure. We're going to see the PL ban. Definitely a hero that's quite annoying. OG, in fact, earlier today ran, a, I believe, a Brewmaster for position for Jurax. Okay. Quite the annoyance to... I mean, imagine Sven just getting like drunk in the haze and stuff like that from a 4. It's pretty nasty. It is very greedy. Like That brew has to have a good start to be relevant later on, but... If you can get away with it, obviously. Very, I mean, I think OG nice. as a whole drafts pretty greedily. Like last game, we saw Phoenix and Nygma. These heroes don't do anything until you get farmed. But they have a lot of confidence in kind of directing the game state to to one where they can get farmed and, and can get some objective, despite having greedy heroes. Hmm. So OG looking for the bans here. Ban out a lot of carries. The like in now the Sven. Interesting. I guess the, the Sven is pretty much the Slardar counter with the Warcry. I think one hero that OG might want to consider is taking out a Slark. 
Not a hero that we see too often, but it's definitely one of the best carry hero that Hellraiser... Like, Hellraiser are Slark pickers, right? And I, so far, your two supports aren't great at dealing with Slark. Yeah, Slaughter could crush while Slaughter... Sorry, Slaughter could crush the Slark while he's in his Shadow Dance. But apart from that, he could, you know, Dark Pack off of pretty much anything. And combine so well with Iron Shell. Iron Shell Slark has, you know, wrecked a lot of teams in the past. And definitely could do a number here against OG, but they're going to take out the Ember instead. I, I like this Ana Invoker ban. I think that just synergizes really well with what they already have. They need a pretty heavy carry. They've got tons of control, but not much damage. Invoker offers you that. Ten seconds remaining. So, smart ban. Let's see now with OG having the pick. Oh, your screen is so black. I know. I should probably be casting off yours. <laughs> yeah, I I tweeted out a picture of it earlier. My my draft is... Yeah, everything is in shadows. I replied to that tweet. I don't know if you saw it yet. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't had the, the pleasure, but I'm sure I'll check it out later, Lumi. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure it'll be will. very dank. Yeah, it is dank indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, I really, I guess the TLDR is it's the Dream Night Stalker game because everything is just darkness and shadows on my screen. Yes. <laughs> that is, they only play off of your screen, LD. Hellraiser. Are we going to see any Pugna here, Lumi? Pugna for Hellraisers? Just for anyone. I mean, Pugna's been so popular for a lot of the teams in the tour. They picked it earlier for Swift Ending. Had an amazing early game and then kind of just falled off. Yeah, completely fell off, I would say. Also, Void being ignored the series. Void has been a very popular pick and ban at the International se 2017 so far. Death Prophet. Yeah, that's I, it's obviously someone who's great. It goes well with the amp damage for taking Roshan, gives you that objective taker. But they don't know... Th Normally, I feel like we see Death Prophet once you kind of know the matchup in the mid lane, and yeah. that's definitely not the case yet. I want to say, and don't quote me on this, that whenever they have Death Prophet, it's no tell playing it, and they put Ana in the carry position. All right. I'm gonna do a quick like stat check on that. The anti anti physical damage pickup comes now. Lich, okay. The Lich is grabbed. You see a Slardar. Obviously, the Frost Armor is great against him. You see a Death Prophet. Same is true there. And perhaps you see an opportunity to pull ahead in these lanes. I mean, I think their laning stage is pretty strong, honestly. You've got oh, two, two heroes running around with the Ion Shells, and now you've got the Lich to get the experience advantage. But OG, oh, they snag a hero that was banned last game. They're going to grab the Anti-Mage. Well, late game pretty secured. Yeah. Unless Hellraisers pull something crazy out. This, I mean, do you want to Pugna into this? On one hand, you get the early game dominance, you get the pushing. On the other, you're a walking mana bomb for the anti mage to come in and wreck your whole team. Yeah, I don't know if Pugna's the hero. Like as far as a pushing hero goes, I think Dragon Knight. Obviously not good against Death Prophet, but maybe you just send the Lich to try and help secure that lane. Troll Warlord. Okay. But I do think you want to push. Uh, you want to be able to apply pressure to towers and constrict OG early. If AM's just allowed to free farm, eventually they're just going to take Roche with Slaughter DP, and they don't have good catch for an AM right now. This troll. Can man fight him? Has a, I mean, Troll is what the lowest int game in the game, so <laughs> he's not too worried about Mana Void. Counter, got him. Troll, Troll is the anti mage counter. He's so stupid that anti mage can't even scratch him. But obviously, I am can just try and avoid fights with him. Yep. Not gonna lie, I so far don't really see the synergy of the Hellraiser draft. I mean, I've, I see a vacuum, but then no way to really combo. What are we comboing vacuum into? Range rolling axe. Get that AoE slow out there. <laughs> Um, obviously, you still have the Iron Shower early game on the Night Stalker. That's always good, but we need a... Because to me, the Darkseer pick is pretty much a waste. In fact, the Darkseer pick could be a liability. Anti-Mage would love laning against Darkseer. Yeah. Maybe you send the Lich there to try and shore that lane up, but... I actually think you send Lich and Tro there. That could work. And then you put the Darkseer. Put the Darkseer safe lane. Night Stalker can roam. Yeah. OG may just play musical lanes at that point, but sure. Yeah, I don't mind that idea at all. I think that's obviously the big benefit of the Lich pick, because it gives you that flexibility. So the one a mid, the one someone that can ideally deal with anti mage later on, uh, or at least match up okay, and who can not get crushed by Death Prophet in lane. So preferably a ranged hero. 
Lena just got banned. Who else is there? There's Quop. Puck. TA? TA. Although TA against Wyvern is a little bit dubious. Um, Shadow Fiend again, I think it will be fine. You just want some sort of physical damage dealing mid that could push the building and pressure. OD, fine. Not as good as pushing building, but a lot better against uh, dealing with the co embrace. Yeah, the OD AM matchup is interesting, right? Because obviously OD's orb is amazing against the AM mm -hmm. with all that pure damage. But on the flip side, he is a walking bomb as well oh, okay. for the Mana Void. So, if you can get him low. So I, I talked about the Brewmaster as a uh, so four it, position pick. Is it an off lane brew for us four? Or. Yeah, it's it a support like Slardar. Yeah. Okay. Drunken Haze. Well, this is ideally the counter to a troll lineup, right? Is getting yep. a lot of evasion and mischance so that all that attack speed doesn't matter because they're, they're just missing you anyway. It can be really nice in a fight, like troll battle trances. You just cyclone him. The danger with what what's happening in, against OG is that I, I feel like the, the sacrifice for Lich is going to be great. No matter what lane is he's thrown in, whether it's anti-mage or brewmaster, they both will suffer not having enough creeps. Although with that said, the, I feel like brewmaster split is going to go off pretty reliably. You're, you're looking at Night Stalker as really the only real way to I shut mean, him down. I, I feel like this OG lineup is super greedy. AM obviously needs a lot of time. Yep. Death Prophet is okay on her own in the lane, but still needs a ton of farm to be relevant later on. Wyvern needs a ton of experience, like very much like the Phoenix in that regard. The Slardar, I mean, he doesn't need items, but you at least want to get your level 6, you know, get the amp damage. And Brewmaster is an offlaner that needs a blink to really be effective, or at least some sort of brawling item if you just want to run in. So one of those initiators is going to need that mobility item. This is like, to me, five greedy heroes. Yep. And you're up against the Lich. So I actually, that said, uh, you know, tr <laughs> OD's not the fastest hero in his own right, but I, I feel like the Night Stalker and the Lich could have a big impact. I mean, I agree with you that I think OG's got the way greedier draft, but it comes down to whether Hellraiser can punish them, right? Mm -hmm. Last game, I, I, I want to say that OG has also got the greedier draft, but they weren't punished, so. Alright, we're into game two, where Hellraiser really needs to start winning some games. Yeah, this is yesterday you had a bad day. It's like, all right, we just have to recover and come back strong tomorrow. You have a bad day today, and it's like, all right, we have to win or we might just be getting eliminated. Yeah. That, that is the position that they're in. Uh, right to now. be fair for Hellraiser, they only had one set of games yesterday against LFY, which was, uh, the, I guess, the group leader. So mm -hmm. no, no uh, dishonor losing to LFY, but... No dishonor, but a loss is a loss, Luke. Yeah. That's... But TI is not TI is not about honor. TI is about winning. Or going home crying. Which will it be? Will it be tears or joy? I mean right now it's about you know not uh losing out just in the group stage, right? Mm -hmm. Making the phase two. Making it to the main event. Dealing the upper bracket. I I don't know that anything's more defeating than just losing that those via ones on the first day and going home. Probably the only thing worse is getting eliminated in the wild card in the old TI format. That's brutal. So then, you know, people are like, oh, it's a two week vacation. It's like, are you serious? If anyone's a competitor, they are borderline suicidal after getting <laughs> watching other people play on that stage where they feel they could beat those players, beat those teams, do better, and just be spectators. Do you like how they got rid of the wild cards uh, yes. in favor of just having more teams and I playing do. it out? I mean, I don't think it changes. There's like the the group stage is basically too much Dota anyway, right? It's just right. like four games at once. The players can't even watch half the games. The casters can only you know catch a few of them because they're constantly casting. Fans can't keep up, even if you have four streams open. You're not really watching all four games at once. As like Jerex will manage to snipe the courier in the okay. mid lane. Nice. I saw him going for it, but the courier was like, hugging nice. the left side, and he somehow still got it. Snuck around. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's too much Dota anyway, so why not just add a couple more games as he will suicide to the neutrals. And ensure that everyone gets a real fair shake. Like at this point no one can complain, oh they got unlucky. Or maybe you face C deck in the wild card and you get eliminated, you know, and that team actually is, you know, a top two team at the TI. LD, I don't know if you're new to this esport thing, but people always complain. Yeah. I, I'm, FYI. I'm, I'm a newbie. 
Oh, as a veteran here, let me let me tell you straight. People will come play. I, I prefer the term savvy veteran. Savvy. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Bottom here, 33, gonna surge himself back out before Anti-Mage burns the rest of his mana, but the lane is pretty much control. Uh, I mean, do you like this decision by HR? I know we talked about trying to send the Lich to the AM's lane to test him. They have chosen to park the Lich mid initially and help out against no -tail, give Kaiser that early edge. I don't like their laning's decision at all because, you know, we like talked Dark about... Darkseer just gets destroyed by AM. Yeah, Darkseer gets destroyed and S4 is getting too much from this lane. What the hell is Milan gonna do zoning him out? I agree. I mean, maybe once Swift Ending gets phase boots, he could solo zone S4. But then I think at that point the damage has already been done, like you've lost two lanes. And then yeah, the mid lane is gonna be pretty much a wash here. Okay, uh, Lich might be a little bit trouble. Oh, Jarek's trying to get in range here. If he gets this crush, it's likely a first cut, and he will find it. The Astro? Vanish available! Kaiser doesn't use it, mm, probably dies anyway. Yeah. And they're just gonna set up, but maybe Jarek's also tanks some power shots. At least. Not worth the mana, he says. <laughs> Bad man. I, I was uh, I was helping you win your lane. I, yeah, I'm really not liking the laning setup. Like right now, S4 is having a pretty free lane top. He's already got eight CS. He's well on his way to level three. The AM's free farming as he's laning against the Dark Seer. Like if you make the move that we talked about from the start, have the troll Lich bottom. AM's being contested. They can actually do something in that lane. The Brewmaster is against the Dark Seer. He's not going to do much there. The lane's constantly going to be pushed, and the Dark Seer can farm his jungle and the lane. That just would have been a far superior laning setup to me, and they're not even winning mid. The CS is even. The only thing you're really getting is you're denying no tell some levels. But, I mean, look at the experience. It's almost even between these two, because they're dual laning versus a solo. So, yeah, I, I completely agree. I do not like the laning setup at all. Yep. And I'm surprised HR chose to lane it this way, to be honest. The other big thing is that I feel like Milan's gonna get somewhat stranded. This is what we see some teams having issues with their four position support. It looks good in the draft, they pick up things like Clock, they pick up things like Night Stalker, and then you realize, wait, I actually don't have any good lanes to gank uh, in actuality. And Look at the commitment here by no tell. Jarex finding that two hero crush gives them both the sucky sucky, and the Spirit Siphon nets him a kill. Lich down again. This is just not working out at all for HR. Kaiser's just straight up losing the lane despite having the Lich. I think this is one of, one of the hardest lane losses I have seen so far, TI. Like, down 2k gold already to an anti-mage draft with an offlane Brewmaster and a Death Prophet mid. Like, these are all on the greedier end of cores, and they're all doing well. And the supports are getting a lot, and the Courier even got sniped. Like, yep. couldn't really be worse for HR, to be honest. Well, Milan needs to do something magical, right? This is going to be his time to shine. He's only level 2. He does have the boots. But where is he gonna get the kill? Gonna be mid? No tail, by the way, just behind the tower. So uh, Fly is also behind the tower. They see J4, the sucky sucky, like you say, that is uh, happening right now. Arctic Burn being applied. Running right into the Jarex Slaughter. He wants the two hero crush. He does get banished. But still the Lich down again. This tri lane mid for OG. Certainly paying off Kaiser, trying to return fire as Jarex gets in on 33, tanking some Ion Shell. Is there a surge? Nothing doing. And meanwhile, Fire again. Courier going down again. Just walked into the middle lane and fed to No-Tail. That was their... I, I, they had the upgraded Courier too. That was the flying Courier. So they just lost track of it in the fight. Yep. All right, that's like a 4K gold advantage now. <laughs> Milan TPs to the fight after the fight's been over. Like, imagine if he had a teleport score to the tier one as No-Tail dived. I, I think they might have got something out of that, but... I honestly think HR is on tilt. Oh, for sure they are. Like, they're, fe they're feeding the courier, they're not making lane adjustments, Milan's not carrying a TP. Honestly, I mean, it's been a rough start to the tournament for them. They are, what, 1-5? in five? Is, it a, is it a careless feed, or is it a CCNC feed? Which one is it? I mean, it died in front of the tower with nobody there, so... Well, we'll see. I think that... The we'll leave it to your conclusions, though. as we have Fly coming in here in the air against Kaiser. Kaiser... Magic Wands up, Self Astros, his teammates are coming in here, they want No-Tail. Jarex is waiting though, gonna try to cut him off, at least ensure he doesn't give pursuit. Milan unable to find a kill, OG just seem a little more organized in all of these skirmishes. Three, four HR heroes down below half HP, no one from okay, OG dead. Wait. Milan is gonna try for it, but hey, simple TP out after the Void, see you later. And all the while, there's an anti-mage free farming bottom, 45 and 22. 
a Brewmaster who hasn't even really gotten into the game yet. He's, he's going straight blink. He's going straight blink, and he's almost level six. As Jerax even thinks about going for that additional kill, but Milan's gonna find him. Oh, no, doesn't like the look of this, and so just crush and sprint away. They're just getting styled on. Yeah, they are. I guess this is where LD asked me, what can they do to come back? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just they need no, they need they need some Lumi's tough love right now. Tell is going to commit the exorcism here. Looks like they want to try to apply pressure to this tier one on the back of that kill. But Jax will be caught out, run down by the double iron shells. Decisive kills for OG. Probably not going to be a very effective exorcism. Does he really want to commit on this tower? There's three heroes nearby, and No Tail should know it. He saw two bottom. He knows the, o the OG's mid. The one he didn't see is J4 coming around from behind, but he might get surrounded and punished. Jax comes in, cutting him off at the pass with the void, the follow up iron shell. They get the kill. A bit over ambitious from Mr. No Tail. Now a double. This is the type of fight that can get HR back in maybe the game. Maybe two, maybe three. It all started with the Death Prophet in too deep, and it's gonna end with a triple for the Darkseer. Just like that, halfway to a mech if that's what he wants. But on the back line here, Brewmaster comes in with the one-man clap. Nice micro by the TI champ, and he is gonna run down Kaiser. Pretty sure another. Another Total boulder dash. toss, follow-up comes through. They got the tornado. So they have the damage, Cyclone, to spell. Another boulder when he hits the deck, immolating, still not dead. Wait, and he doesn't get it. Not quite. Yeah, unfortunate. Maybe he could have put the Earth Brewling a little bit further on up. OD has really high armor, 10 armor, so... Yeah. Like, you're basically just doing the burn damage to him. He could have wind walked with his. Uh, Still, he he's yeah. got the blink now, so that's the big thing. And again, remember, there's one here on OG that's just sitting in his lane farming. Now, granted, the troll is doing the same, but if you're trading free farm, like you'd much rather have the AM free farming. Than I mean, the troll. that troll better be like walking around getting everything done. Uh, I don't know. He's going for the standard mask of madness. I feel like it's going to be a while before troll is going to impact this game. Honest, two thirds of the way to a battle here. So yep. He's on on a great pace here, and Troll's gonna get countered by Drunken Haze. So it's okay. Am will get countered by Bashes, Lumi. Okay, <laughs> I'm down for that. <laughs> That's it's indeed the case. And Ana ports up top. I'm gonna start pressuring this building. So first night time over, they got a decent amount done. Still OG holding a sizable lead. They did get some deep wards up here as Jarak snakes around. He's gonna try to set up on 33. Coming in as well is S4. Blink is cooling down, but he gets the drunken haze off. Jarak oh. whiffs the crush. Expecting 33 to surge all the way down face. Guys are wanting to fight this. Not quite yet. Do they know that he has blink? I, I'm not sure whether he. I mean, he threw the drunken haze at him, so if they okay. clicked him, they definitely should know. Now they definitely do. If OG really wanted to, they could have just waited like a half second, been a little more patient. But end of the day, they're getting this tower mid. That's a big opening for them. Sets up potentially the future Roshan. Meanwhile, HR looking for their own towers, but it's kind of slow going. Ana's also pushing the stop lane. And during the daytime, he is unafraid of Milan. Blinks in, chews up all his mana, threatens with the void even. Freely cutting the wave, 600 gold away from a Battle Fury. You're looking at, what, an 11 minute Battle Fury? With all the, the accoutrements, all the little accessories. Bottom lane though, grabs an opening. 33 on the sprint, gets caught by the boulder toss, and now into the crush, surrounded and beaten down by an army of angry pandas. He will perish. And all space created, really, for the anti-mage end of the day. Yep. He is just happily farming jungle creeps. Being about as efficient as you could possibly expect for Ana. Eight plus CS a minute right now. That is really impressive. Pretty much meaning that he's missing nothing. Which I guess... You and know. he's farming the jungle. And that's all without the Battle Fury, too. Yeah. It's uncontested, right? Like, this is the big downside to the way the lane, lane setup went. It, it's not that. It's just that Anti-Mage is uncontested and Brewmaster got a lot, right? Like, that lane swap, I, I honestly think, like... Like, what did the I Lich actually do this game? Instead of losing them two lanes. Right, right, right. The Lich, to me, just fed mid, and that's not what you picked the Lich for. Tough situation that HR 
struggle to battle back from is every single core is being outstripped and outfarmed by his counterpart. Even the OD who got all that early help mid, he's gone double bracer here. A swift ending tries to duke it out with Ana, but Fly is in position. Not yet level six. Mana okay. Void is available, but Troll's Mana Pool so pitiful that it probably wouldn't be enough for the kill anyway. Secret counter to AM as we touched on earlier. But that's... LD, you've done it. You broke Dodo. You figured it out. Yes. Why has nobody been picking Troll to counter Anti-Mage, guys? Look at that int. 21 int. That's pathetic. I think PA is also up there, or rather down there. Down there. <laughs> when it comes there. to end game. Also very good against the anti mage But yeah, see the issue is like they committed all this, they committed a lot of resources, right? Putting the Lich mid to help the OD and he doesn't even go Midas. Like he's not even going greedy. He's going for a very utility build. Uh, so HR is really setting this game up that they have to have a good, let's call it 15 to 25 minutes. And I, I just think that's, OG's lineup is already online, you know? Yep. They already have a very strong 4 protect one, so... If you're gonna commit the Lich mid, I think, with the way the lane's up, you have to be greedier and try and squeeze a Midas in to have any shot late. Yeah, and I don't count OG giving them the, the freebie one by one by one that they just did, like, five minutes ago. OG, they, they, they recognize they have the anti mage. All they have to do is chill, play the game slow. Don't get, don't get pressured in by the Night Stalker, and you're fine. In fact, this Night Stalker, I don't think have done enough. Yeah, Milan, I, I think you pointed out early, didn't have that TP for that first rotation. And that right. first night is very important for Night Stalker. The second night, I think those those are by far the most two important nights. All the others are, you know, at that point, the game's already been, the tempo's been set. The advantage is claimed one way or the other. And, you know, your vision can still turn a late game team fight, but lower chance of it being as important. To me, like you compare that to what Jarex did, on, you know, not on a Night Stalker, but another similar roaming hero in the last game, and it's it's nice day. Yeah, like this game, even he's not the warrior, setting multiple kills on the mid lane. Roshan, gonna get claimed here by OG, so another checkbox ticked here for the four more boys in green. There's a lot of checks right now. Yeah, what are they now? The boys in blue and red. There's too many boys in blue. Boys with wings. Oh. They will lose the Aegis immediately, and now the, the Centaur finds S4 in the back, and he's trapped him in as well. No blink ultimate. A pretty good kill if you ask me for Hellraiser. Yeah, free takedown on the DP. Swift ending. Looking to make a swift ending up this tower, but again, it is on the top lane already. Cutting the waves, threatening to take this tier 2 out as they are just thinking about a tier 1. There is no mod on the Brewmaster. S4 is going to get just enough with those bottle charges from friend, Mr. No-Tail, to have the split ready. J4 lurks in the trees, but while they're scrambling to try and take down just the tier 1 mid, Ana is just getting free damage in top, wailing away at this tower. OD will arrive. It does have the Ato soon, so like a small snare, I guess, to try and deal with him, but still, the teammates just breaking in the gold. There is no Frost Nova available, and that means diving time on J4. It's caught by the Death Prophet Spirit Siphon, quickly dealt with. Now 33 in trouble. As they do commit the Brewmaster split, he worms his way into the trees, trying to get back out, but caught with the Cyclone to start. Spell to follow the crush off the mark, but doesn't Ooh. even seem like it's going to matter as the Boulder Smash is there. Enough damage from the Spirit Siphon, he still ends up going down. The Wyvern was clipped on the backside, so HR got a small retaliation, but again, they are fighting 5v4. Wait, Ana no is tell? farming. They got to get more out of this. No tell ported out in front of the OD. OD, I guess, didn't see him in the bog or something. It's I, also nighttime. So. Yeah. I, I do want to point out the build that 33 has went for. He's taking a page out of Ice Ice Ice's playbook uh, when Helm of the Dominator has been very popular. He's He got it on like, pretty much every single offlane hero. And in Darkseer in particular, very good. You could you know put the Iron Shell on, on one of the big creeps, have them farm for you. You could accelerate your farm in both the lane and in the jungle. And he's been using it to battle. Uh, we, we saw earlier just now the Iron Shell onto the Centaur. Walk up to the Wyvern, got off a stun, and just essentially solo killed him with the creep. Pretty he's good really stuff. not very farmed for that, though. He's only got 73 CS, which, I mean, I think for Darkseer going this build, if you're envisioning it helping you farm, is pretty mediocre. He has fought a lot. 30, it, it's kind of like a mini Midas, but also gives you a little bit more benefits. It's right. not something that you'd be like, oh god, I, I got a Midas or anything like that, but it's a little bit extra. Uh, 
Um, but at the same time, it does delay your mech, which... Do you, think, do, you like, do you think if he had gone mech, for example, like they'd be in a better position to take some of these fights right now? Or I don't think so. Or do you so. think the Dominator's paying for itself and the better value? I think it'll pay for itself eventually, and I don't think the mech would have like changed the outcome of the last fight, for example. Ana now Yasha up, Manta coming soon, so that Ato's going to have a pretty limited you know, period of usefulness. I suppose for other heroes it'll continue to be more relevant, but all the cores starting to slip in net worth. No one went greedy on HR, and they're just not able to find that many fights. Like, there's one tower been taken. They haven't been able to walk into the Roche pit. It just really does feel like somehow OG know what they're up to. They're one step ahead of them. When they make a move, they get a kill or a courier or a tower. And they also dodge the fights when they're not in position to do so. They'll now grab that tower top. Again, response is a bit lacking. HR trying to even take the tier one, but still OG may come and defend this. If they do isolate fly, that would be a big pickoff, though. Fly not dead just yet. In comes Jared's oh. close with the crush. Now the clap follow up. Locking down Milan. They're going to finish up the Night Stalk and the Exorcism deployed the Brew Split online as well. And now look at the Cyclone Panda chasing forward, trying to hunt down Swift Ending. Will they be able to keep the vision on him? They're expecting him to cut to the north. He heads south. Doing so probably gets away, but down goes the OD once again. They're forced to scatter to the jungle, but no such scattering for OG. They just walk straight down mid. They go straight for another big objective. Maybe the bashes will be with Swift ending. He gets one. Needs probably one or two more. They could potentially back him back in. Well, the blink's on cooldown. Bash. First oh. hit bash. No. It's basically got to be that perfect, that lucky. And now, Jurax in position to perhaps set up a fight. No, he actually gets caught on the left side. He's gonna go down, not before he takes the ruin though. S4 comes back in, Anti-Mage pops a Mantis out. Chain Frost is gonna be available as well. Monovoid got mo a Magic Stick, but here comes a good curse. I think it was on the Centaur, of all things. Fly on the backside, looks like he's gonna get caught out. OG, this might not be the fight that they're looking for. Fly goes down as well. No Tail comes back in, but here comes a big S4 clap. They see Kaiser isolated. They can burn his mana very quickly. He's getting the Sucky Sucky. Kaiser should go down, get Silence on top of him. They need a little bit more. They will get it. No Tail now under fire, but he's very tanky because he has a solo quest already. Now here comes Ana blinking forward. He wants a kill on Swift Ending, but Swift Ending making it to the shrine. Pops a Whirling Axis, ring around the Rosie, but I think he ultimately will get chased now. OG set up, and with the Cyclone then into a clap, he falls as well. I mean, it felt like an okay fight. You know, Ana monovoided a troll. That basically did nothing. Yep. And they cursed the Centaur. Actually blinked away. They cursed the, I believe, yeah, like you said, cursed the Centaur. It was a pretty discombobulated <laughs> fight. They didn't even have exorcism for it. And they still can't take the fight. You know, it just it doesn't feel like HR of the firepower. Lumi barring a godly chain frost. Like it's they don't even have a point in the wall yet, so they don't even have the anti mage illusion to work with. They're just really behind. You're just under farmed, under leveled especially. And you kinda see it there that OG can get away with a subpar fight and still take it. Yeah. Up by 14 net worth, 14k net worth now. Um, anti mage, no counter in sight. I mean, once once Anna just picks up the butterfly, the game is effectively over. I mean, you could you could make the argument that the game is already over, but that will be the the final nail in the coffin. Well, with a loss here, HR would drop to what is it, one and six? One and uh, five. Uh, well, sorry, one and five. I think I gave them an extra loss earlier. <laughs> We start the cast. Um, That's how the international work. And LD just has a slip, just hands out losses. <laughs> I don't like you. you, get, <laughs> you this, get is, this is so bad, you get a double loss. But um, it's it's going to be one win, and then every other game has been lost. I think one and five is right. Their win was against... Uh, yeah, they were one and three coming into the series. So they'd be one and five. Uh, OG would be six and two. So at that point, OG's in a decent position. They played... Who'd they play so far? That was like a, a tougher opponent. They 2 0 Cloud 9. They played Secret, right? They 1 1 DC, 1 1 Newbie. Okay. Maybe I'm here. Secret is a different game. Oh, I'm thinking of one. Alright, so No Tail dropping now. The Exorcism, the Chain Frost comes in from downtown. J4 trying to chase him out, but they've committed a big ult already. No Tail hides in the trees. He gets off the silence. Kaiser does not have a way to remove this. He's getting. 
jumped and controlled for now. From the side comes the Brewmaster split, isolating the troll, throwing the OD up in the air so they oh, can focus on other stop. targets. And that sets up Jirax, comes in, all oh, oh, head full of steam and gets the double hero crush. Now the chase is on for Swift Ending as well. And he's cut off on the other side by Ana, who came in late to the fight, cleaning up the troll. The OD going to fall as well. That's three down. Everything they had committed in this fight, aside from the OD ult, and they still get run over. OG are already rushing towards the tier 4s, but they'll back off for the lower hanging fruit now. A follow up crush, the back is there, but that's it. Still no point in the wall yet, and 33 might live to regret it. Sliced and diced. Anti Mage chews him up, spits him out. Already closing in on said butterfly at 3,800 gold. GG, OG. One of the quickest series of the international group stage so far. Yep. Feels like an hour in total for both games. The impressive thing is that they're able to have a 22 minute victory with the anti mage pick. And I just mean they just outplayed them. Very same storyline as game one. OG not showing anything crazy. Uh, I, I do walk away from this like blading setup. Hellraiser's had a better option. They didn't even try it. Yep. Um, and you know, maybe they out mind game themselves and thought OG would try to dodge and that's why they sent the lanes that way, but then they didn't also switch. So I yeah. that makes me think they just weren't intending to do anything unconventional. But uh, you know, that Darkseer anti mage matchup, the Brewmaster Troll matchups, those are pretty favorable for OG, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we, we can't really get into the heads of the players, but when you said that, you know, they they may be tilting, I I think I agree with that statement. It's just, we've seen Hellraiser do better. Uh, this is not the Hellraiser that took the, the qualifier spots. Maybe they need the old Planet Dog name back, you know? Perhaps that was their lucky charm. <laughs> it's not too late, guys. You've got two more days, but... Another loss here for Hellraiser's now one and five. OG surging forward to six and two. Guys, thanks for joining us. The International 2017 will continue in a bit.